Hello, it's Len. In today's video, I want to tackle a subject that I've received many messages and comments about over the years, and that is, did the hugely popular Netflix series Stranger Things get inspiration and or ideas from my personal 1980s VHS home videos? First, before we get into it, if you've never seen my channel or any of my videos, you might be wondering why the producers of Stranger Things would have even the slightest interest in my channel or the videos I post. Well, as we all know, Stranger Things is set in the 1980s, and the storyline centers mainly around a fictional small town called Hawkins. I happen to have grown up in a small town very similar to the one depicted in the series, and all throughout the 1980s I shot many home videos of my friends and I that I've been sharing on YouTube for quite a few years now. So my channel is basically a time capsule showing the daily lives of a bunch of small town teenagers in the 1980s. Not only have I posted these videos on YouTube in different forms and on different channels over the years, but in the 80s and 90s I regularly mailed VHS copies to multiple pen pals and VHS traders that I used to correspond with around the country, including DVD copies in the 2000s. I've also provided many copies of my home videos to various production companies over the years that were looking to license footage for use in documentaries, commercials, feature films, music videos, etc. So my home videos have been circulating in one form or another since the late 1980s. Stranger Things begins in November of 1983 when the main characters were in the 7th grade. The 1983-1984 school year was when I was in the 7th grade also, so I would have been almost the exact same age as the four main boys. Since I'm roughly the same age as the characters in the series, younger people often ask me if 1980s life was really like what is shown in the series. So today, using my own personal VHS home videos that I shot in the 1980s as examples, we will try to answer two questions. Was the 1980s life shown in Stranger Things realistic? Did they get any ideas and or inspiration from my home videos? Now the town of Hadlock that I grew up in has a slightly larger town very nearby called Port Townsend. Most of my old home videos were shot in these two places, so for the sake of simplicity, since they are so close together, I'm just going to refer to both of them as my hometown, as if they are one place. And speaking of, let's take a look at that name, Hadlock, and the name of the town in Stranger Things. Both start with H-A and both have seven letters in the name. Coincidence? I'm just messing around. I don't for a second believe that they came up with the name Hawkins from the name Hadlock. Okay, enough silliness. Let's have a look at some aspects of small town 1980s life as depicted in Stranger Things compared to real life as captured in my 1980s home videos and see just how accurate they are. Bike riding. Kids riding their bikes everywhere they go at all times of the day or night. Yes, this is 100% how we traveled before we were old enough to have driver's licenses or cars, especially for all of us that fell into the category known as latchkey kids. A latchkey kid was basically a kid who came home from school to an empty house because the parent or parents were away at work. The term refers to the key to the house that the kid had to carry around with them at all times. If you weren't old enough to drive and there was no one home to drive you where you needed to go, you'd have no choice but to walk or ride your bike. Small towns like the one I grew up in didn't have much of a public transit system either, so you were better off just hopping on your bike. There were shortcut trails all over town to travel without having to be on the main roads, and where the trails ran out, you just pushed and or carried your bike. For many kids, the moment the street lights turned on was the signal to head home. But for a lot of us, riding around at night in groups or alone was a totally normal activity. So to me, the scenes of the characters riding around in the dark are very realistic, though that probably wouldn't happen much today. The only issue I have as far as realism goes in these scenes are the lights that they use on the bikes. I can honestly say that I didn't know even one kid that used a light when riding at night. I'm sure there were some out there somewhere though, just not among any of the kids I knew. Forts. Will Byers has a fort out in the woods near his house he calls Castle Byers. Building and hanging out in a fort was definitely a thing for small town kids in the 1980s. 
My friends and I had one somewhat like this in the woods near my house. The thing with forts in the woods though was that there was always a chance that another group of kids would find it, raid it, destroy it, or if they were older and bigger, simply take it over and claim it as their own. It was for this very reason that I constructed my next fort in a slightly concealed location in my own backyard. This mostly eliminated the threat of it being raided by other kids, and since it was close to my house, I was able to run an extension cord out to it so we could actually have power inside. Bedrooms. The bedrooms the kids have in the series look very accurate. The rocker kid Billy definitely has the classic stoner kid bedroom. The bedroom of Jonathan Byers is... Wait a minute. That right there is literally the exact same stereo that was in my bedroom when I was a teenager. What a coincidence. Police station. The small town sheriff's office located right on the main street. Yes, we had the same thing in our town, with officers in there typing out reports on giant typewriters. Sneaky teenagers. Barb and Nancy sneaking over to Steve's house for shenanigans while his parents are away. This is an activity unmonitored teenagers will always get into and this was definitely the case for myself and my friends. Pretty much the moment parents were gone for any significant length of time, phone calls would be made and people would be invited over to hang out and stir up some kind of trouble. You'd have to be careful though because some parents would require a check-in phone call at some point in the night so everyone would have to get really quiet. I'll get it. Yeah, I'm quiet. I imagine that this type of sneaking over to someone's place while parents are away is becoming a thing of the past as ring cameras and similar video monitoring become the norm for most households. Also apps that show parents the real-time location of their kids' phones. Sorry kids. TV channel surfing. Scanning the channels to see what's on. In those days, that was the only way to see what was on unless you bought or subscribed to something called TV Guide magazine. Or some printed newspapers even contained a local channel guide section inside of it. You also had a very limited number of TV channels to choose from. I remember at one point in the mid 80s being super excited because we were able to get 12 channels. 12! And it wasn't like today where you simply pick the show you want to watch and start binging. You were stuck having to watch whatever it was that they were playing at that moment. Stores. The stores they show in Stranger Things have the right vibe for the stores in the 1980s. In the 1980s, 24-hour 7-Eleven type convenience stores started popping up everywhere. This is another thing that is basically unimaginable now, stores not being open 24 hours. When I was a kid in the early 80s, the local grocery store would be closed by like 7 p.m. In fact, the whole town would be shut down, except for the local bar, of course. It looks like a ghost town. But there's people at the bar. Vacant and abandoned lots. The place with the old junk cars and whatnot where the kids hide out when they're running from the bad guys. This type of empty lot with old cars or equipment scattered around it is classic 1980s small town kid life. Not only the type of place where many had their first beer or cigarette, but an overwhelming number of guys in my age group came across their first dirty magazine in a place like this. There were a few places like this around our town in the 1980s, but I'd say one of the most popular spots was a place known as Fred Hill Gravel Pit. It didn't have a bunch of old cars, but there was a big open pit and it did have this tall, rusty, out of commission concrete processing machinery that was great to climb on. It was centrally located so everyone could get there by bike or walking really easily. This was where many a runaway would go to hide out. 
I knew multiple kids who ran away from home and set up camp in or near Fred Hill. This was also the de facto location for fights, and because of the location, there was no worry of adults or police showing up to break it apart. But if they did, then everyone just scattered into the woods. The mall. The Star Court mall scenes are pretty spot on to the mall experience of the 80s. Unfortunately for us living in Hadlock in the 1980s, the nearest mall was over 30 miles away, so there weren't a whole lot of kids traveling there to hang out or get jobs. Instead, in our town, many teens worked at the local grocery store. And the parking lots of the local businesses became the hangout spots, often well into the night. Telephones. It seems crazy now, the idea of living in a world where if you wanted to get a hold of your friend, you had to call them on a phone that was permanently attached to a wall or a public phone booth, but this was life as we knew it in the 1980s. Stranger Things depicted this activity quite accurately, including the annoyance of having a second phone line in your house located in another room where your parents might pick up and listen in or disrupt your very important teenage conversations. Mom, get off the phone! Consider yourselves lucky, all you kids with cell phones out there. Just imagine your mom suddenly popping in on your conversation, as if any of you ever actually talk on the phone to someone anyway. Okay, gotta go. Arcades. The arcade, the closest thing to heaven on earth for kids in the early to mid 80s, so long as you had some quarters to spend. I got into trouble multiple times for sneaking quarters out of my dad's change jar to go to the arcade and play Stargate just one more time. <laughs> By the late 80s, arcades were starting to fade though as the popularity of home gaming systems rose. Homes. I would say that the interiors of the homes that they show in Stranger Things look very accurate. They also nail life in the mobile home park inside and out. Video rental stores. Family Video, the video rental store that Steve and Robin work at together is quite accurate. Most Friday afternoons, I would head over to our local video store and rent something for the weekend. Usually a horror movie of some kind. Video camcorders. A few times throughout the series, they show people recording videos with a shoulder-style camcorder. These were very similar to the ones I would rent and or borrow to record my videos throughout the 1980s and 1990s. Once again, you young people are so lucky to have a device that fits into your pocket for recording videos. These giant things were awkward and annoying to carry around and film with, and the battery generally wouldn't last very long. In general, I'd say Stranger Things does a really good job of showing life in the 1980s. Yes, we could sit and nitpick little things that they got wrong here and there, but it would be nearly impossible for them to get every single thing right. Now let's have a look at a few things that people have pointed out to me that they thought were very similar to specific people, places, or events shown in my home videos. Hawkins National Laboratory gives off a vibe that is somewhat similar to the cavernous bunkers at our local former U.S. Army base, Fort Warden, which is now a state park. Filled with what feels like an endless maze of long, dark tunnels, this was a regular destination for my friends and I to go running around in for hours at a time. It certainly has the feel of a creepy, underground government laboratory where they would be performing secret experiments. When I was a kid in the 1980s, my friends and I used to try to make our own homemade horror movies. None of them really came out very well, and a lot of times they were never even finished. Over the last few years, people have pointed out little things from those homemade films that they felt were similar to the storylines in Stranger Things. 
Will Byers runs from the monster and locks himself in the family's backyard shed. There is a scene from one of our films where we are being pursued and locked ourselves in the backyard shed. The drain pipe in the woods leading to Hawkins laboratory that Eleven escapes through. In one of our films, the killer escapes the insane asylum through a similar drain pipe. The kids gearing up to battle monsters end in season four, putting on army fatigues. In 1986, we dressed up in army fatigues to head into the woods and set traps for the fictional killer that was stalking us. In season two, there is a house party and Motley Crue is playing on the stereo. In the video of my 19th birthday, we are throwing a house party and Motley Crue is also playing over the stereo. A different song than the one in Stranger Things, but Motley Crue just the same. I'm rocking out to Motley Crue, dude. Do it, man. Billy Hargrove, the mulleted rocker that is always listening to metal and racing around in his 1979 Z28 Camaro, is said to be inspired by the character Billy Hicks as played by Rob Lowe in the 1985 film St. Elmo's Fire. Although he does look like a spitting image of Rob Lowe in the movie, multiple people have pointed out to me that Billy drives a car very similar to the 1980 Pontiac Trans Am that my rocker friend raced around our town in while listening to metal in the late 80s. And my friend's name? Yes, it was Billy. In season four, the group heads out into the woods to find Eddie Munson at a place called Skull Rock. Skull Rock is a rock formation in Hawkins located near Lover's Lake. In a video on my channel, my friends and I travel into the woods and visit a place called Big Rock. Like Skull Rock, Big Rock is a rock formation in our hometown located near a lake. This was a destination for many a local stoner kid to smoke without worry of police or adults showing up. Okay, so we see there are a few similarities, but big deal. Personally, I'm not convinced that they got any ideas from my videos. Yes, if you search YouTube or the internet for anything like life in the 80s or growing up in the 80s or teenagers in the 80s or something like that, my videos are definitely going to come up. And yes, these videos have been circulating for a long time, but it doesn't really prove anything. But then again, there is the Eddie Munson character. People started messaging me and sending me pictures of him pretty much the moment season four dropped. Eddie Munson is the lovable metalhead character that ends up getting sucked into all of the spooky excitement that the other main characters had been dealing with, and he was an instant fan favorite. If you happen to be a Stranger Things fan, then you're probably aware that the Eddie Munson character was based off of the real-life story of Damien Eccles, who was probably the most famous casualty of the satanic panic hysteria that gripped the country in the 1980s and 1990s. So the character is based on the real life of Damien, but as far as looks and attitude goes, people began pointing out to me the striking resemblance between Eddie and my friend Han as seen here in one of my Day in the Life videos from 1987. Duffer Brothers for sure used this video to get inspiration for Eddie. Dude with long wavy hair and denim looks like Eddie, lol. Eddie Munson, hehe, <laughs> I found Eddie Munson. Inspiration for Eddie Munson? I totally just saw the real life Eddie Munson. I swear the guy wearing Stormtroopers of Death was the inspiration for Eddie Munson. Tell me how the dude with the guitar and jean jacket reminds me of Eddie Munson. So are the Duffer Bros gonna compensate you and your guitar buddy? You know, since they ripped off the look for Eddie Munson from him and obviously watched this video, LMAO. Not only is their hair and outfit nearly identical, including the rings, but Han is also sporting a BC Rich guitar, albeit a different model. Han has a BC Rich Ironbird, while Eddie has the BC Rich Warlock. In fact, here is Han checking out a couple BC Rich Warlocks at a music store way back in 1987. Not only did Han and Eddie both play in a garage band, but Han even played Dungeons and Dragons for many years. But that must just be a coincidence, right? <laughs> so, I don't know. There are similarities, but I'm still not convinced. I'd actually really like to hear your non-biased opinion about this in the comments. 
And to the Duffer Brothers and the Stranger Things writers, if you did take a little inspiration here or there, maybe just give me a little secret shout out somewhere in an episode, a little hidden thing that only I would notice. Like what if you had one of the characters drop a little direct quote from one of my videos, or that was so obviously similar to something said in one of my videos that only I would recognize. This'll do. This'll work just fine. Okay, what the 